Last week, I began to introduce something that uh, was really vital in this whole process of loving people well, and it was the term with wisdom, with God's wisdom, that truly being able to love somebody well is dependent on it being saturated with or motivated by God's supernatural wisdom because there are many potential things that line up with the scripture that you can do for a person and consider that loving them well, but it was not necessarily going to be the right thing at the right place at the right time because it will make them codependent on you or it will do something else or it will keep them further away from having to go after God for themselves. When I took uh, uh, a drug counseling course, when I worked in a what was called a drop-in center in St. Paul, Minnesota, we took a, a, a counseling course because a lot of people that we dealt with were uh, drug addicts. They were addicted and with some drug in their lives. And so one of the things they taught us was the most difficult thing to get a parent to do is to stop putting a mattress under their son or daughter but let them hit the ground. That is the most kind, loving thing you can do because there is something within the heart of every single person that once it hurts, truly hurts, and they know they're not able to manipulate themselves around any longer, they will figure out how to get what they need. And sometimes we create dependent relationships and it makes us feel good about ourselves. And that's an okay thing. That's a good thing to feel good about what you're doing, right, Bill? Yeah. It's, good. it's good. If it's what God laid on your heart to do with his wisdom, anything that draws people's attention to depending on you means that they are being taught to not depend on anything but you or upon God. God wants them to learn how to depend on him and how to focus on him. Now, he has all kinds of wisdom on how to do that. There's not just one size that fits all on that. And sometimes you do need to give them a fish. And sometimes you need to teach them fi to fish. And sometimes you need to allow them to have to figure out how to fish. Because if a person has enough of a need, they will, they'll find out how to fish. If they become convinced that they are going to have to learn to fish, then they'll figure out how to learn to fish. It's just the way that life is with people and the way that the human being is created. So, wisdom. How do we apply the love? What is love from God's standpoint? that is loving a person well. And it's this thing about wisdom. So let, what I want to do today is to spend the next few minutes, and it may be only 10 or 15, and you might be eating early, and everybody shouted, that'll be a miracle. <laughs> but what I don't want to do is overcomplicate this today. I want you to come away with one thought that you begin to kind of start paying attention to and focusing on for yourself. And uh, it's the aspect of, liz of wisdom. So, first of all, a couple verses. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. The Lord, by wisdom, founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up and clouds dropped down the dew. The Lord founded the earth with wisdom. Wisdom is a major, major thing in the scriptures. Psalm 90 verse 12. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. All right, now that's a scripture verse. What is the heart of it? What is it saying to you? It's saying to me, I do well if I begin applying my heart to the issue of wisdom in my daily life. That I make wisdom a big deal to me. 
Proverbs 4, 7. The most important thing in life is wisdom. That's the NIV. The most important thing in life is not your paycheck. It's not discovering how you're talented. It's not discovering your giftings and all of the kinds of things that we tend to focus on. The most important thing in life is wisdom. So make your highest of all goals to get wisdom. And with the wisdom, get understanding. Okay, now here's something that we're real good at as teachers and preachers. We use all of these conceptual words, wisdom. What's the difference between wisdom and understanding and knowledge? I'm supposed to do that, but what does that mean? I'm one of those people that is a, what's called a YBH person, yes, but how? And that's one of my intents in this church is to really push the area of, yeah, this is what we're supposed to do, but how do we do it? Yes. Practically speaking, how can we put this in practical, take away practical daily terms? So let's talk about knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. These are real simplified basic definitions or descriptions. And let me just add that particularly wisdom, as you read about it throughout the scripture, and as you take that word in the context of various scriptures that it's spoken of, and by the way, that's a word that's used a lot in the scriptures, over 230 times. It's got many, many shades of meaning. So that what I give you today is just one focus, but realize it's got many shades of meaning. All right, but knowledge is the gathering of information. To get knowledge is you gather information. Understanding is the ability to apply that information. Oh, you thought that's what wisdom was, didn't you? Well, it is sort of, it's all mixed together. You know, we're good Westerners, we're scientific. To study things, we split things up into categories and too much sometimes make them sole entities on and of, of themselves rather than let them be holistic. They all kind of work together, but to study it, we kind of separate it a little bit, and that's okay. So knowledge is the gathering of information. Understanding is the ability to apply that information. And wisdom is knowing when and in what way to apply the understanding. Okay, so let's describe the difference. Knowledge, I go into the library, pick up a book, and memorize some of the facts. This is the act of acquiring or getting information. This act alone gets me knowledge. I, I'm getting information. I have to have information. That's why when we ask the Lord to train us in hearing his voice, we need to make a commitment that we're going to put the information in our minds, in our hearts. In other words, the more we fill our hearts with a consistency of just simply getting the word in us, and paying attention to and learning the facts of what the word means, you'll discover that God speaks to you a lot more. A lot of people open the Bible when they've got a pressing need to try to find a solution or acquire God's favor so that he'll have grace on them. You know, in a chapter a day, I'll keep the devil away. You'd be surprised how many years I lived like that. Or how many years as a minister, I cracked the book to get a message. But not to be storing it up for myself because it was rich in personal nourishment and nutrients. Okay, so knowledge, we acquire knowledge. Understanding, once we take the facts, we get the facts, we learn some of the ways to use the information and we practice those ways. In other words, we become skilled with the information. It becomes now working knowledge. It works for us. 
uh, a golfer, for example, they, they learn how to, well, not too many people in here are golfers, cooks. Okay, cooks, they, they learn, they get, they get information, they get a recipe, and they learn certain laws of how to boil water. You know, it won't boil until you put fire under it. Stuff like that, you know. Ice cubes won't freeze until you put it. I don't care. You can fast and pray for years. And that boiling water will not freeze until you reduce it to 32 degrees. Don't tell me God can do anything. I suppose, yeah, I suppose he could. But I don't, actually, that's a self-imposed law. He made things to work that way. He made it to work so that water had to be 32 degrees Fahrenheit before it would begin to freeze or change in the solid. So, you know, it's like God bless me, prosper me in my life. Well, I hope you're as wise as the farmer and as knowledgeable that you go out into the field, you till the field, you pull the weeds, and you plant seeds. You can dance up and down on the ground and pray and pray with all kinds of sincerity and focus. And if you didn't put some corn in the ground, corn is not going to grow. And so, therefore, it's not just a theory about God's good and he blesses and multiplies. He does, you, know what, you know what a million times zero is? It's zero. And God isn't going to change that law for you just by his grace. I mean, sometimes it looks like he's done that. But if you really discovered, that's why I focused on the, the thing this morning of why did they suddenly feel the spirit fall? They did something that cooperated on their side. And then the spirit, then they had that experience, but they focused on an anticipation. So that was their side of it. All right, so knowledge is the gathering of information. I go to the library, pick up a book, memorize some of the, the facts, or, I, or in some way, I learn facts. Then I begin to practice those facts. You can have the best recipes in the world. You can have a cookbook full of gourmet meals like none other. Tony, we can have a spam cookbook. It's got all the recipes in it. But until I myself start to try to cook that and become skilled through practice at cooking that, then I won't have any working understanding of the information I've got. It's the same thing is true with the Word of God. Then what's w wisdom then? Once you've practiced the knowledge, you've learned it and are beginning to develop some personal skill with it, you now need to have wisdom to know, know when, where, and how to best use your skill. Amen. A lot of people's hearts are full of good feelings, if not love for people, but they would be much more effective in what they do if they would get some wisdom along with what they're doing. But here's the information, there's the interesting part about wisdom. It only comes from God. Amen. Wisdom comes out of the heart of God. There is a conventional wisdom in the world that comes through practicing things and you sort of get wise about it. And we, we refer to people having street smarts. But when you really boil it down, wisdom comes because you've sought God for wisdom. You put together the knowledge, you practiced it, you became skilled at it, but to use it correctly with the right time at the right place, you need to appeal to God to show you what the right time and the right place is. Because wisdom is something that is birthed out of the heart of God. Conventional wisdom is inferior to God's wisdom. Conventional wisdom will get some things done here in this earth, but it will not have any eternal implications on it. That's been a problem with Christianity in general. Lots of knowledge gathering, and becoming somewhat skilled with some of the knowledge, 
but falling way short in doing very well with knowing how, when, and where to apply the knowledge and skill they've got. We're good doctrine learners. We're good information gatherers. And sometimes we'll sort of practice it. That's why in our, our class that we have on Tuesdays, I always give assignments of some kind to work with. Because you have to do more than just listen to the information. You need to become committed to putting it into practice to develop a skill at using the information. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He's talking about life wisdom. He's talking because a lot of what the, the Spirit of God is going to speak to you is going to be wisdom. If you allow him and you develop this relationship where you believe that the word says, where Jesus said, man shall not by, live by bread alone, but by every word that, and it is in the ten, continuous tense, is proceeding now out of the mouth of God. There was a time when I didn't, I had a brother in Christ who was constantly coming up to me and saying, what's God saying to you today? I started avoiding him. <laughs> Because I didn't want to look as unspiritual as I was looking. Uh, well, and I'd scramble, man. I would scramble and try to remember something that he showed me a couple years ago. Or I would try to come up with a quote out of a book I was reading. But God is, didn't stop talking when the canon of Scripture was closed. He's still speaking today. And so one of the things that is important to me is to know what God is speaking to me today. What is proceeding out of his mouth for me today? We pay a lot of attention about what's proceeding out of other people's mouths. We have great focus on what's proceeding out of the mouth of the people that are hurting us or aggravating us or life circumstances but we don't have the focus of attention that would be so much of a blessing to our own hearts and to God's heart if our focus each day was, Lord, I want to hear something from you today. I want something to come through. And then, you know, it doesn't just fall out of the sky. I mean, you kind of have to take some time and set aside some time and focus on the fact that for this 15 minutes or whatever it is, I'm going to focus my heart on the fact that God is right here with me. And you can aid your heart with your mind from distraction by taking something to focus your eyes on that keeps it from wandering back and forth. But I want to know what he's got to say to me today. I want to know in general what's important to him. I often say that. God, what is important to you today? Because what he's going to do is he's going to share what's important with me, with, with him. And then if I follow that up with also show me how to do it. What is, what's the wisdom application here? We're talking about personal relationship with God. I grew up in a denomination. Their question was, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? And what they meant by that was, have you said the sinner's prayer so that you, when you die, you don't have to go to hell? Have you received personally the forgiving power of Jesus Christ? And I'll never diminish that. That's step one. But me saying the sinner's prayer did not give me a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That is something that is developed on a daily basis. Little by little by little. That is taking a, even just a couple of words from the scripture that stick out to you. And allowing God to just warm that into your heart. It's an active daily relationship. So, you know, when we say you need wisdom with the love, what we need to realize is that this is really about developing a being on, let me put it this way, 
This is about being on speaking terms with God. And so my question to you today is for you to ask yourself the question, am I on speaking terms with God? A lot of people don't know whether they are or not. And if I am, am on speaking terms with God, what have you said to him today and what has he said to you? See, it's all about a focus, an intimate, intentional focus of being in relationship with the living God. Wisdom starts with the fear of the Lord, according to Proverbs 9.10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But that word fear does not mean to feel terrorized by the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. One of the way, practical ways I described it several messages ago was I worship the ground you walk on. You remember that sermon? It's having a heart that's intentional focus is, God, today, I worship the ground you walk on. It's another way of saying the fear of the Lord. It means deep respect. Such a deep respect that it's not simply a matter of saying, I acknowledge you as important. You know, a lot of people have acquaintances. Is God just your acquaintance? Is Jesus just your acquaintance? Is the Holy Spirit just your acquaintance? Or do you know him? It's your friend. A lot of people have acquaintances. And how many of you know that's a different relationship? Amen. Just having an acquaintanceship type relationship with God. It's sort of like uh, talking to God. A lot of people talk to God the way the old, I can't remember the name of the TV show now, but it was back when Dirt was new and I was uh, a little bit younger. And uh, Vinnie Barbarino. Welcome back, Cotter. Oh, I see a lot of you are older than Dirt. <laughs> and the way Vinnie Barbarino would say, you know, would greet somebody, it's sort of the way that we acknowledge God. Hey, God, how you doing? How you doing? And then move on. And so a lot of our prayers are kind of a, how you doing? By the way, it'd sure be cool if you would do something about that rat. Because he's on me again, and I don't, I don't know how much more of this I can take. Do you understand that, God? Instead of saying, good morning, God. Good morning, Lord. This is a new day. I love the way the Jews wake up in the morning, their prayer, thanking the Lord for returning their soul to their body. It's a hyperbole kind of a thing, really. But it shows the intensity of, I'm glad that I woke up alive today. I'm glad I'm alive. It's got that kind of intensity of instead of, oh, good Lord, it's morning, to good morning, Lord. There's another day to walk with the creator of the universe who is passionately in love with me and everybody around me. And so I want to know what you're saying today, Lord. I want to love well today. I want to love you well. And I want to love others well. And I want it to be with the way you would do it at the right time. I want wisdom. I'm going to apply my heart by deeply respecting you and purposely going after wisdom in my heart that comes out of a relationship with you. It says in James, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. If you need wisdom, don't go look at somebody's book in the library. That's just an assimilation of information. If you want wisdom, ask the source of the wisdom. 
Ask the source. How do I respond to this? A lot of times we already know there's things that we can do. God doesn't have to invent them every day. There's needs around and you know it. There's needs in your family and you know it. And when one of those things comes up into your mind, Lord, how can I participate with you in that today? In what way? Give me the wisdom to participate in it. Wisdom is more than just natural common sense. A lot of people think it's just common sense. They'll say, well, you know, you just grow in common sense. Come on, man. No, that is really not what wisdom is dependent on an active. I'm talking about the wisdom that gets God's job done. How many of you want to get God's job done? Yeah. You want to get God's job done? Well, wisdom is about getting God's job done. And he's given each one of us and put us in places in life where we can get his job done in different kinds of ways. Even when a person is uh, unemployed and they're looking for another job, what I encourage them to do is to pray and say, Lord, I want the job that is going to put me in contact with the people you want me in contact with. Because you are the supplier of all of my needs. So therefore, Lord, I need a job where the person that's, no people that's going to be around me are the ones that I can uniquely reach. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And it says, but fools despise it despise Bill I'll use you since I we know we love each other but I'm gonna use this as an illustration despise doesn't mean I despise you because everybody in here could say I don't despise wisdom the core of the wor word means to take lightly Take wisdom lightly as an afterthought. But God considers that despising. To take anything about him in his life as an afterthought, because this is the real world, is actually in his eyes the same as despising. So he's not an afterthought. And let me give you one more definition, and it's for the word beginning, and then we'll be finished for today. We think like Greeks. And so we think one, two, three, linear. So the beginning is here. This actually even applies to Genesis 1, 1. But the beginning is here, and then it goes along a linear line. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. Another word for the beginning would be the choicest part. If you were to go to a restaurant and you were to tell me, show me on which, which cut of beef is the choicest part. What is the best cut of beef I can get here? It's the same word as the beginning. The choicest part of life is wisdom that comes out of your ongoing relationship with God. So love well, motivated by the choicest part, wisdom in how to express that love. You need to get knowledge. You need to be thirsty. And I, I love to learn things. You need to be thirsty for knowledge. And then you need to take those things that you're learning into the best you know, begin to practice them, and try to become skilled at that. Become skilled. How do I love people? Gather information. Then how can I become skilled at loving people? Then, Lord, how can I take that skill and apply it at the right place at the right time? And I need that from you because you're the one that shows me that as we live together on a daily talking terms relationship. Because the choicest part of my life is to live in the wisdom of God.
as I express His love.